From running around at recess to looking sharp in the lunch line, this is the famous footwear that makes us actually want to go back to school. With the newest styles from all your favorite brands, like Nike, Adidas, Crocs, Converse, and more. You'll find everything kids want, all at prices parents can appreciate. And famous footwear even has fit experts in store to make sure you get the right size every time. So, for the perfect fit, make it famous. Find all the best back-to-school looks at your local famous footwear at Metro Crossing, just 10 miles away. Some exclusions apply. When it comes to business, the people who succeed tend to be the people who seek out partners with skills or knowledge that they don't have. And that's what Lenovo's free online membership program, Lenovo Pro, can do for small businesses. If you're not a tech expert, that's where Lenovo can help. So you can add Lenovo's team to yours and then lean on them for all your tech questions for free. Visit Lenovo.com slash Lenovo Pro to sign up for free. That's Lenovo.com slash Lenovo Pro. Lenovo, Lenovo. It's time to get inside the Giants' home. Let's go, let's go, let's go. On Giants.com. I like it, I like it, I like it. And the Giants mobile app. Boom, give me some juice. Part of the Giants Podcast Network. Let's roll. Welcome to another edition of the Giants Little Podcast, brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the New York football Giants. I am John Schmelk. A good show coming up for you today. A in-depth conversation with Giants quarterback Daniel Jones about the season and this game against the Vikings coming up on Sunday. Also, Bob Papa's conversation with Brian Dable. We're going to start with Daniel Jones. Had a chance to talk to Daniel about a variety of topics, his career, the season, and this matchup against the Vikings. Now we're joined by Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. DJ, what's going on, man? Not a whole lot. How are you doing? Do you still get really pumped up? Like, Do you feel the adrenaline going first game of the season? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I think... uh... Yeah, I think you, you need to feel that. If you don't feel that, it's a problem. But, um, yeah, I'm excited. So you've talked a lot this offseason. Brian Dable is going to be a new voice in, in your helmet. He's in a lot more meetings with you. He's talked about how your relationship with you has kind of grown as you work more together uh, this offseason. Does it mean a little bit more something when you're getting the direction in these meetings directly from the guy that's not just your play caller but also your head coach? Does it hold a little bit more weight when you're talking directly to the guy that's kind of running the whole operation in terms of what he wants from you as a player? Um, yeah, I guess. I mean, I think, uh, you know, Dave's has been very involved, you know, since he got here. Of course. Um, you know, so we've had a lot of conversation, but you're right. Yeah, certainly more in the past few months. Um, and I feel like we're in a good spot. Like we're, uh, like we're seeing things the same, the same way and on the same page and, and, uh, the communication has been good. So I think, you know, he's been in my, in my helmet all training camp and, you know, we'll get out there on Sunday. It'll be, uh, the same thing, just an extension of that. He he has a pretty unique energy to him, right? Like, do you, do you even get that when he's communicating plays to you? Because he can be in your headset until a certain amount of time on the play clock, right? Mm-hmm. What is it like, kind of having that voice in your head? And and is it a little bit different given his kind of unique energy and the way he goes about his business? Yeah, he's he's very passionate, very competitive. I think, um, you know, you, you feel that, you sense that uh, in the play call, and and uh, you know, I think. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's just the play call. You you don't get any more commentary. So that's, uh, you know, it's just about the play and executing that. You know, in practice, you'll, you're you getting the play call. And then there's, you know, after your period or after your sets, you're communicating, talking to the coaches, going th- going over things. So that's really where you hear the maybe that personality and, and that passion. But, uh, you know, when the play's coming in, it's usually just the play call. He was asked today about, you know, what he wants from his quarterbacks. And he said, just be a good decision maker. Make good decisions. To you, what does that mean to you as a quarterback to be a good decision maker? Uh, I think, you know, um, protecting the ball, for one. I think, you know, understanding what the defense is doing, reacting, making uh, the right decision, making the right read. Um, you know, when there's a chance for a shot, taking the shot, and, and uh, that's a good decision. And when it's not there, uh, knowing that and making that decision too and then doing that on time and, and in rhythm – um, you know, keeping us on track. I'll get back to the shot play in a second because I think that's interesting too. Is it just about finding answers given what the defense is showing you pre-snap and then what you see once you snap the ball? Is that basically just going back to all your work during the week and understanding what your answer is in your play based on what the defense is showing you? I think so, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, it's about seeing uh, seeing the defense, seeing what they're doing, uh, keying the right guys on defense. I think you know you understand who who it is you're reading based on the play, based on what the defense is doing, and then uh, making that decision and and, and uh, you know seeing it the correct way. So yeah, a lot of preparation goes into that, uh, into uh, you know trying to 
you know, uncover what the defense is in and then, uh, and then go from there. I don't, if you don't want to get too far into the X's and O's, that's fine. I know a lot of teams are leaning more into the pure progression stuff, right? You go one, two, three, four, no matter what the play. Other teams have, all right, well, if you see zone, it's one side of the field. If it's a different zone, it's the other side of the field. Do you guys mix that up, or do you have a specific way that things run in Dable's offense with how you're looking at the defense once the ball snapped? I think we have certain plays uh, where we do, you know, where we read things differently. And, uh, you know, those are two, certainly two categories of, of plays uh, where you'll have a, a pure progression or you'll have a, um, you know, a man side or zone side or, a, or, you know, a certain way you're going to read, read the play. And then, you know, there's other elements to it too, where you have a, if you have a certain look, take this matchup. If, if not, then you go into this progression type, uh, type read. So I think, uh, you know, at this point we've practiced, you know, I've been in this system now, this is going on my third year and, um, we've had a, a whole training camp this year where you practice those plays and you get used to them. And what's the, what's my answer here versus this? What's my answer versus this? Um, you know, and you got to do that on time and in rhythm. It's funny. You mentioned this being your third year. Whenever you're in a system for the second year, I think you got this question a million times last offseason. Second year, how much more comfortable are you in the offense? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if anyone has asked you this summer, is there a difference in your third year? Do you continually progress when you're in an offense longer and longer? Do you feel even better about finding those answers and knowing what you're supposed to do in certain plays than you did even in year number two? I think so, yeah. I think uh, you know being in the system for a third year helps. Um, just playing another year of football, you know, and uh, yeah, I missed a lot of time last year with the knee. Um, but you watch football and you try to stay on top of it. I think just another year of learning and um, – you know, you know, hearing, hearing the play calls, watching the film, uh, listening to the coaches. I think you're always trying to learn and grow, but I feel more comfortable than I did last year. And, um, you know, hopefully that's always the case. You feel a little bit more and more comfortable, like you know a little bit more every year. Does that show up in how quickly you can then get through that decision-making process once the ball's in your hand? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the challenge is always, you know, can I make the right decision as quickly as possible uh, on time? Um you know, I think that's that's always a challenge. So the the more you see it, the, the quicker you're able to recognize it. The you know the quicker that decision comes. So I, I think uh, yeah, it's a, it helps. More reps always help. You said it earlier. Um, when there's a chance to take a shot, take the shot. Otherwise, it's smart to check it down. I asked Shay Tierney about that when I talked to him early in the year on one of the media availabilities, and he said what he tells you guys is be aggressive, but don't be reckless. Right? How do you in the heat of that moment when you have to make that decision and a half a second, whether or not to let that ball go. How do you balance between aggressive but not reckless? Yeah, um, you know, all the decisions you make are, are in that half second. Fast, so you got to get good at, at making decisions quickly. I think that's that's part of the challenge of playing quarterback. Um, but it's knowing where to look, knowing where your eyes need to be, uh, who's the defender you're reading, uh, what's he doing, what's his body language, and then, you know, you got to make a, make a call and, and go with it. So – um, it's just practice and repetition and seeing the right guy, timing it up with your feet, um, and getting the ball out. From running around at recess to looking sharp in the lunch line, this is the famous footwear that makes us actually want to go back to school. With the newest styles from all your favorite brands, like Nike, Adidas, Crocs, Converse, and more. You'll find everything kids want, all at prices parents can appreciate. And famous footwear even has fit experts in store to make sure you get the right size every time. So, for the perfect fit, make it famous. Find all the best back-to-school looks at your local famous footwear at Metro Crossing, just 10 miles away. Some exclusions apply. I was talking to Eli yesterday, an interview that's going to air on, on the radio pregame show, and I talked to him because he's had great wide receivers, guys on the top 100 list, Odell Beckham, right, uh, Hakeem Nicks, Victor Cruz, and he talked about the impact of having a guy that you can consider a number one and how it makes some of that decision-making process easier, right? All right, well, when you're man, I don't care what the play is. I'm going to my guy. He's my guy in a great situation, right? So if Malik does end up developing into that type of number one wide receiver, he's a rookie. We'll see how that goes, right? Does that make some of the decision-making process easier for a quarterback knowing that if I'm in man, if they're in man, I have this guy that I know he's going to win and I can get him the football? Uh, yeah, I think I think so. I think, um, you know, I, I got a lot of trust and, and faith in, in all our guys. I think they've done a really good job through camp and um, – you know, I do think it, it is some, you know, you get man-to-man coverage and you got to have a consideration of, you know, who's running which route and 
who's a defender, um, you know, what are my guys best at, what are the defenders best at, sure. what's my best kind of chance to, to get a win here. Um, and so you're, you're always considering that, I think, in, in every play, especially in, in man-to-man coverage. And uh, we got a lot of guys who can win and, and get open, but Malik's done a great job through camp, and you can tell, uh, you know, how good, how good he can be uh, in a lot of those situations, and, and I have a lot of trust and faith in him. And for a quarterback, knowing you can put a ball up to a guy even when he's not, quote-unquote, open with a ton of separation, and this is not Malik, this is all the wide receivers, that you can trust them to go up and win in a contested situation. Does that give you a lot more confidence to let the ball go in some of those situations down the field? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, when you throw the ball, you want to know it's going to be, you know, my guy or or nobody, and and, uh, my guy is going to go up and and fight for it, make sure, um, you know, try to catch the ball, but at the very least make sure it's not in the other team's hands. And, and uh, you know, I got a lot of faith and confidence in our guys doing that. Um, and so, you know, the more faith and confidence you have, the more likely you are to, to, to put it up there. It was funny. I was looking back at some of your earlier stuff, and I feel like you really had that with Golden Tate when you were here early in your career, that there was a lot of those slot fades where it was contested coverage, but you would throw it to him and he would come down with the catch, and it seemed like you were more and more willing to give him opportunities down the field. Yeah, I think that's that's. I mean, you have success with a guy, and you build that confidence and the trust that, hey, I'm gonna throw. You know, I'm gonna give you a chance, and I'm um, counting on you to to go up and get it, or or to you know make sure it's not it's not in the other team's hands. And and uh, you know, you see a guy do that in practice, and then, but you know, they show you that in the game, and and you feel good and feel confident about about putting it up there. You mentioned the other receivers. I feel like you're getting a real good chemistry with Jalen Hyatt. You connected with him on a few back shoulder plays, whether it was the joint practices or um, you had a couple one-on-ones on on the right sideline, where I feel like that's a real feel thing, right? Getting those back shoulder throws where he Mm -hmm. needs to know when to turn, you got to put the ball in the right spot. Is that just a sign of how much he's grown as a receiver and you guys have kind of built chemistry over the past offseason? I think so, yeah. I think, um, you know, those... Those back shoulder throws uh, have a lot to do with timing and, and, you know, both being on the same page of how a defender's playing. Uh, you know, you're kind of reading it, trying to see it together uh, and make the right decision. And then it's about, you know, ball placement and then him judging it right and kind of falling off at the right time. Jalen's done a good job with him throughout training camp, and he's got a really good feel for, for those. Um, but we spent a lot of time together this off season, you know, throwing, working out, um, you know, communicating and, um, I think, you know, he's had a really good camp and shown up in a lot of big spots. We haven't talked about your offensive line yet. Specifically, what does it do for a quarterback to have a veteran offensive line in front of you that can maybe help with protections, help with pre-snap stuff? You understand that they're going to be able to communicate and pick things up. For a quarterback, the benefit of having a group in front of you that's veteran, been through the wars, and you know that you have a high level of trust in them, at least in the mental part of the game. Yeah, I think it's a big, I think it's a big deal. Um, I think uh, having guys who've played and, and played in a lot of systems, seen a lot of different things, can problem solve on the fly, communicate, get everybody on the same page, and then play fast. I think through the week, your preparation, I think that's important. Those guys know, um, they know what to look for. They know how it needs to be communicated. Um, and then when you get out there on the field, um, you know, it's just translating that. And, and, you know, ultimately in the game, some stuff's going to come up that you haven't, you know, had time, you haven't seen on tape or, or you didn't get repped in practice. And uh, you got to find a way to make it work. And, and uh, you know, having veteran guys, uh, you know, helps that. It helps me. Um, and I think all those guys have done a good job. All right, and the, just on the opponent real quick, I think you did a great transition because that's going to be important this week because the Vikings are going to show you stuff that's a little crazy up front, right, and stuff mm-hmm. that you haven't seen before and stuff that maybe they haven't shown on tape before. So what's the process for you in the offensive line, pre-snap, post-snap, trying to figure out who's coming, who's not, who's faking coming, and then dropping, and trying to figure all that out so you know where to go, to the, go with the ball as part of that decision-making process we kind of talked about? Yeah, I think um... – you know, we'll certainly be prepared and, and you study what they've done, uh, what they did last year and, and have a plan for it, have have answers, um, you know, in protection, have answers with the routes, have, you know, ways to, to uh, you know, ways to diagnose what they're doing and then, uh, you know, get to your answer. But uh, I think ultimately, you know, you build that system and you build, um, you know, how you, you know, your plan of how you're going to attack it. But at the end of the day, it's week one, um, week one for them too. You, you know, it's a different team. You don't know exactly what they're going to do. It's going to be some curveballs, And so, you know, that makes, uh, you know, makes you emphasize your own preparation and, and making sure you're all tied in and, 
and everybody's on the same page. And, um, you know, as long as we're executing and we're seeing things, communicating, doing what we need to do, um, you know, we'll be in good shape. I know they run a lot of cover zero. They had the most in the league last year, second most with the Giants. So you saw a lot of cover zero oh, yeah. in practice. <laughs> so how much does that those reps against cover zero, which I'm sure you're going to see plenty on Sunday, kind of help you be prepared for a game like this against the Vikings, even though the base of their schemes might be a little bit different? Yeah, I think, it, you know, uh, going up against Wink last year in practice and, and his different looks and pressures and, you know, challenges a quarterback, challenges the protection system, um, yeah, I think all that all that's helpful. The more reps you can accumulate, more times you can see it, the quicker you can be diagnosing it and getting to an answer. So, um, yeah, I think you know some of that some of that experience is helpful for sure. And then finally, they also drop eight, right? They don't just blitz; they also drop eight mm-hmm. uh, for a quarterback. When you see eight guys back, only dr- rushing three, is that a deal where you have opportunities to run because there's going to be some lanes, only three guys rushing? You can be more patient back there, trying to find somebody. How do you handle when teams drop eight, only rush three? Yeah, I think you still go through your read and your progression. If you have something, uh, you take it. Uh, but yeah, there's there's an awareness for hey, they're only rushing three guys here. They got eight guys in coverage. Um, you know, you, there's a little more time and use your legs, run around. Uh, if you can run for it, you know, go, go ahead and run for it. If if not, then you know, can you move around, displace their zone, and, and find find an open guy? All right, Daniel. Great stuff, man. Really appreciate the time. Good luck. Week one. All right. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. You're ready for a change. Payday comes early with citizens. So go to that retreat. New you moves to the country. Now you're raising goats and launching a lifestyle brand. Are you ready for all that life brings? You love turf. You're good at it. So you start a turf biz. Business grows. Your savings grow. Become the most celebrated name in turf. Are you ready for all that life brings? From running around at recess to looking sharp in the lunch line, this is the famous footwear that makes us actually want to go back to school. With the newest styles from all your favorite brands, like Nike, Adidas, Crocs, Converse, and more. You'll find everything kids want, all at prices parents can appreciate. And famous footwear even has fit experts in store to make sure you get the right size every time. So, for the perfect fit, make it famous. Find all the best back-to-school looks at your local Famous Footwear at Metro Crossing, just 10 miles away. Some exclusions apply. Good stuff there from Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. The Giants Little Podcast is brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants, from game day celebrations to your everyday financial needs. Big Blue fans can get the most out of every moment with Citizens. Learn more at citizensbank.com slash Giants. Now it's time to listen in to Bob Papa's conversation with the head coach of the NYG, Brian Dable. He started with coach by asking him whether or not he still gets excited for opening day. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's one of the, the great times in, in the NFL season is opening day. There's a lot of unknowns. Um, you know, you're still figuring out your team and, you know, figuring out the other teams and things like that. So, um, I know the guys are excited to to go out there and, and play another against another opponent. Um, you know when it counts. Do you have to for the young players, maybe the rookies, uh, just you know talk to them, and maybe you have during the course of the week about, hey, look, it's a sixty minute game. You know, let's let's just manage this and let's not peak too early as far as emotions are concerned. Yeah, you know, we'll talk about we'll talk to that about our whole team um, again. It's an important game. It's, it's the first game. It, it only counts for one. Um, so after after the first week, you're going to have a bunch of teams that you know have a loss and a bunch of teams that have a one, and it's a long season. And um, you know our focus has to be just one play at a time, not get too high, not get too low, um, and be in the moment. Let's talk a little bit about the Minnesota Vikings. Um, obviously, you know when you played them two years ago on Christmas Eve, and then you beat them in their place in the playoffs. Uh, it was kind of back and forth, a lot of up and down. But defensively, they've changed completely since the last time you played them. Brian Flores is now the defensive coordinator. What are some of the challenges that his defense will pose for you today? It gives you a lot of looks. So there's a lot of communication that's involved, starting with the quarterback and the center. They do a lot of disguising on the back end, and they bring a lot of pressure. So you, you combine the the looks with the disguise and the pressure, it's a, it's a challenging scheme. Because your offensive line uh, has a, guy, a lot of guys with experience that you've brought in, 
I'm assuming communication is very important. I, I got to feel that, you know, that's a benefit for your group today, not only being at home where you're not going to have to deal with crowd noise when you're on offense, but the fact that you have guys that have a lot of starts under their belt playing in this game. Yeah, it's good to have experience up front, uh, no question about it. But, again, each each week is a new week. Each team is a new team. This is certainly a challenging team relative to – the scheme that they use, uh, and it's going to take you know all five guys seeing it as one on each and every play because you have one breakdown with, with one thing, and, and that usually leads to a negative play, which, you know, for the most part, you know, hurts scoring. You brought in Devin Singletary. Obviously, uh, this is a guy that has a really nice resume, and I want you to talk a little bit about his football IQ because you know when you talk about that pressure. And when he's in the game, you know, the back is responsible in passing situations. But, you know, some of the intangibles that Devin brings to this football team. Yeah, he's a good leader. He's been with me for a while. He, he understands our system. Uh, he's a pro, goes about his business a certain way. And I think people around him uh, on the football team, not just on the offensive side, but on the defensive side, see that. So he's a good example for the younger players. He, he sets a standard and he meets it every day. So... When you have a veteran like that, and, and we, we've brought in a number of them, uh, that certainly helps out the younger players. Go to the other side of the ball. I mean, the last time you – it's funny how things changed. The last time you played them, they had Dalvin Cook, who was having a Pro Bowl season. Kurt Cousins, a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback. Neither one of those guys is there. Now you're going to face Sam Darnold, and Aaron Jones comes over from the Packers. But, you know, offensively, what are some of the things that – they do well that you have to be on your P's and Q's defensively for? Yeah, I think they'll try to control the line of scrimmage, run the football, use their play action passes off of it, um, and then you know get the ball to number 18. So you know we have to do a good job of setting the edge and, and building wall, tackling well the run game, um, not giving up explosives, or limiting them the best you can. You know, 18 is going to get his plays, uh, but we're going to have to do a good job of knowing where he's at. And then on the other side of it is Addison, who's a, who's a young receiver but a very talented receiver who runs good routes. He's an excellent complement to J.J. Um, you know, it's a you know, tough perimeter unit that you're, you're, you're facing. So in the back end, we're going to have to do a good job of, of communicating. We talk about the offensive line, but the back end is going to have to do a good job of communicating and, and making sure we're on top of the things we need to be on top of. Coach, uh, just wrapping it up here, um, Today kicks off 100 seasons of Giants football. You'll be in the locker room at halftime. You're not going to be part of any of these festivities. You have tunnel vision. But in the broad scope, when you think about the history of this franchise and the significance of what today means, uh, can you talk about you know your thoughts about what this season and what this day is all about? Yeah, I just say we have a tremendous amount of respect for the people that come before us um, that have laid the foundation for this historic franchise, uh, ownership, former coaches, executives, players, uh, staff members. You know, there's a lot of staff members that even when I got here that have been here for a long time. So um, it's a, you know, it's an important season, obviously, for the organization in terms of it being 100 years. But for us, again, you, you go back to tunnel vision. That's that's an accurate statement. Um, you, you certainly have respect, appreciation uh, for all the you know historical things that this organization represents, but you have to be locked in on the things that you need to do uh, for each and every week. Coach, we appreciate a couple of minutes. Best of luck today and throughout the course of the season. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate you. Good stuff there from Bob and Coach. Uh, we always appreciate Coach's time. We'll have him on the audio version of this podcast uh, every Friday uh, for the rest of the year, if there's a game on Sunday, obviously, uh, as we get you ready for game day here on the Giants Huddle Podcast which is brought to you by Citizens, the official bank of the Giants. Citizens will donate $750 to the Giants Foundation for each scoring drive during the 2024 season. Learn more at citizensbank.com slash Giants. Giants hope to donate a lot, or have a lot of money donated to that foundation this game as they take on a Vikings defense that had some issues last year. A lot of new pieces there. Good coordinator in Brian Flores. Giants off offense led by Daniel Jones will try to get off uh, to a bang this week. Thanks for being with us. Thank you to Daniel. Thank you to Coach Dable. Thank you to Bob Papa. I'm John Schmuck. We'll see you next time on the Giants Huddle Podcast. When it comes to business, the people who succeed tend to be the people who seek out partners with skills or knowledge that they don't have. And that's what Lenovo's free online membership program, Lenovo Pro, can do for small businesses. If you're not a tech expert, that's where Lenovo can help. So you can add Lenovo's team to yours and then lean on them for all your tech questions for free. 
Visit Lenovo.com slash Lenovo Pro to sign up for free. That's Lenovo.com slash Lenovo Pro. Lenovo, Lenovo.